Hograel here. Sorry, I was distracted. The heroes found some interesting things. I helped them spend some time researching a Belcora's study, and Tulak showed me the true names that he found behind the picture of a drow named Volok. A fascinating place to find such powerful things. After they rested up, well, they continued their endeavors downward, taking an alternate route to the level below. And they came across a finely set banquet table, surrounded by the grisly scenes of skeletons, the dead strewn about the room. And from these dead rose faint blue lights, corpse lights, I'm told, killed one of their companions not long ago. Their blood must have run cold, but I know as well as anyone that revenge can be a sweet nectar. Well, 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 here we are. You guys, you guys, you guys, you know who you are. Who, me? You guys, yeah, no, no, not you. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not you. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, you guys, I have, I have a small announcement, small announcement. It's probably not going to come as much of a surprise, but we are starting chapter four today, hey! right now. Oh wow! Chapter yeah, four. This is, this is chapter four. Um, we're on level four now, of course. Level one being the surface, and uh, this is your second time venturing into it. But you just you just got into a room. You defeated some corpse lights that really messed your day up last time. This was four of them, and you pretty much walked through them. And uh, now you have a ton of doors in front of you, and it's chapter four time. Uh, and Boom. this is the final chapter of book one. Wow! Holy shit! Wow! So this is getting down uh, to some nitty gritty. Um, and like we did with the previous chapter, I want to do something similar that we've been kind of doing now is I want to know what you guys thought of the previous level. Give me some. Uh, I, I'm going to move the map over for you guys. I'm going to move you all over there. I want you to give me some idea of what you think that whole map was used for. Like what? What was this original purpose other than the obvious library? I mean, purpose? libraries. Oh, sorry. Other yeah. Than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't jump the gun on me, Scooty. Well, I just thought I knew the answer for once. Yeah. When we other did the other the floor library. and James was saying like servants chambers and this and that, I was just like, wow, I didn't, I didn't catch yeah. that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I really haven't taken <laughs> notice of the surroundings as much as I hope you think you have. Yeah, have. Having known James for quite a while now, I was not surprised at all that he was thinking about it the whole time. And then having known you guys for quite some time, I was also surprised you weren't. So, uh, so maybe wow, hoping okay. right. this time around you were paying attention, or maybe it's all James again. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> uh, almost certainly all James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Scott, Scott's right. This has to be the library. Uh I, I, you know, there's that little fountain underground courtyard there. Um, yeah, where you're at, Augrail. Yeah, yeah, in, in the the, the south west mm -hmm. corner. Yep. My confusion is the devil cells. Yeah, prisons. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't fully understand that because we didn't get the impression that they had been converted into prisons. So they were were right. It seems like they had been designed as cells. And I get it kind of like there's kind of a quick back road to get to them. Mm -hmm. But I still don't understand why they would be on this level, because this level, other than that, like little room. Mm -hmm. It really seems kind of serene. Like it seems really peaceful. She's got belcor has got like a like her own bathtub, a nice little reading room. You know, there's mm -hmm. a direct line to the furnace to to crank up the heat if they need it. Yeah. There's you know like a bunch of different library rooms and and a bunch of different um, you know there was clearly a staff here at one point, like a large staff. Right. Yeah. She also hated librarians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was like you know you have this main library and you have like the secure collection. I think it was called. And then there was that room that like put things on display, especially books. So there's a lot of grandeur built into some of it. And then that comfort, you're right, and that 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 reading room, and there's a bathtub and the desk nearby and all that. And then yeah, that that fountain one that you first mentioned, that's like a visitor's reading room. But then even south of the main reading room, you have like a whole circular area where the where the twisting energy from Gauntlet is. Like there's just divans and couches all around there for reading as well and studying. Um Anyway, continue. Then there was the elevator. Yeah, yeah. The secret elevator. That led up yep. to level two, I yep. believe it was. Yep. And then I've been confused this whole time about just why there's one room that they're obviously like mining out and was right. never completed. Hmm. Any anyone have thoughts on that? Uh no. It's heading to the north, so my best guess is the workshop. Maybe maybe there's another level below the workshop that we haven't found or discovered. But other than oh. that, I, I I really have have no idea. I can't even mm. I mean, adding another room seems correct. Like, you know, that's just how you would add another room this far mm -hmm. underground. But I guess if it's more what... recent, but like if it was holdover from before, I mean Obviously, it goes many levels deeper than this, and they obviously completed the rest of this one. So I'm just like, why one unfinished room? I wish we had a dwarf mm -hmm. on our crew. <laughs> Someone should have rolled a dwarf. Actually, quick side story. I was uh, digging in the rain in the yard with a pickaxe the other day, about chest deep, just trying to dig to put in a new pipe. And I was just like, hmm. hmm. Maybe I should roll up a dwarf because I fucking feel like one right now. <laughs> I love it. I love a good dwarf character. We've only had one in this group and they died rather quickly. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I don't want to talk about it at all. Yeah, spoilers. Sorry, guys. I can't do a Scottish accent. I feel like Freeman would give me a hard time if I did a dwarf without a Scottish <laughs> accent. So, Hey, I don't do an accurate one uh, at all. Like, if, I, if I do it to a Scottish person, they just shake their head at me. Aim, aim for Welsh and you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> aim for Welsh? Like, how? <laughs> there's not enough consonants in the world. Well, oh that's what God. I mean, is you don't have to do an accent so much as talk with an upward inflection and just <laughs> you, a bunch of words. You, you don't have to talk with an accent. You just have to gargle consonants all day. Oh, my God. Yeah. Previous to this, we were talking about building up our, our European and UK audience. And I, now I think they're all going to run away. <laughs> Shout out to the Welsh. <laughs> Yeah, big big oh, fan of your your uh your your sci-fi <laughs> doctor television. Uh, all right. So, I mean that's it's you got some legitimate concerns there, uh, confusion about the uh the prison. Totally get that. Um and Hold the on, unfinished can I, can I touch one more time there? on that though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know what's one floor down. So, you know, maybe those weren't supposed to be long-term holding cells, but maybe they wouldn't want to bring people deeper than they had to mm -hmm. they want to bring oh, them like jail cells yeah just a little yeah, bit the down. old prison versus jail mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah, yeah exactly okay yeah that's good so call. for for those okay. european listeners that we've already alienated to continue <laughs> to alienate them in north america in our judicial system we have temporary holding cells known as jail cells that usually <laughs> exist in a common jail or a police precinct in smaller towns it's called Shout the drug anyone tank. Well, the tank is a type of holding cell. Okay, yeah. only a certain <laughs> type of person knows it as the drunk tank. <laughs> Canadians. <laughs> and the Irish. <laughs> and then if you're held uh, for, for longer than a certain amount of time, I think it's 60 days, you're normally transferred to a prison. 
<laughs> or if you get convicted. Or if you get convicted, yeah. Yeah, it's when you get sentenced, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Some of us have been to jail but haven't been to prison. So shout out. Some of us. Uh just some of us. <laughs> I have been to jail, but it was because my father was a police officer and he wanted to teach me a lesson. One time. <laughs> oh, I went to the drunk tank. <laughs> okay. I've never been, I can honestly say. Well, anyway, um, I guess uh, the level three is like reasonably self-explanatory to, to some degree, um, but some of it is a bit confusing. I think it's uh, it's kind of cool. I, I, I hadn't really considered um, the perspective of, of jail versus prison. I think that's pretty cool. Um. I, I had neither until Duncan mentioned it. Yeah. So good, good, good catch. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see level four because we've had two tastes of it so far, and they seem yeah. to be on the very opposite ends of the spectrum. Weird mushroom yeah. room <laughs> and sick little dining hall full of cars. Yeah, this big like open open air like pavilion in a big cavern filled with mushrooms, and then yeah, this dining hall filled with skeletons that clutching their own throats like they, they'd clearly been poisoned the other place um, was very yeah. morrowind and i was feeling it mm. and they're not like they're not really that far apart either like like based yeah, on like the, geographically, the upper yeah. floor map like geographically these two entrances aren't aren't particularly far apart so i'm curious to how the geography changes yeah like the door you went in at the pavilion and the door you came into this dining room are uh from east to west ish about 120 feet apart yeah, so, not, so it makes me want to go east because the dining room is is west of the pavilion. Well, we got a fuck ton of doors to go through, so I'm cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I believe we ended on um, the end of the combat, so you've yet to search the room of any kind, and you have many a door: one to the south, one to the west, two to the north, and three to the east. Correct on all accounts. <laughs> What would you guys uh, like it to do? Uh, search the room. i just like to point out that the last line of my notes for the last session are we handle our business. <laughs> <laughs> and that There's always did. a couple of little gold nuggets in your notes. I love it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the few times we do, you might as well throw it in there. Right? So you search in the room. Um, you can clearly see that some of the remains of the guests have a couple of items scattered about their persons. Is there anywhere, anywhere uh, besides those? Is there anywhere in particular anyone wants to look? I want to search the walls for secret doors. Okay. Because we don't have enough already. <laughs> More <laughs> options, really. You know what? No, no, there's no secret doors that are like, hey, here's a fucking spear that comes out and stabs you. It's always a treasure chest. Just for the listeners who maybe it's been a while since you heard the last episode there are including the one we came through after we came down the stairs there's eight total doors in this room so mm -hmm. yeah. if you get confused that's okay because we're confused <laughs> yeah <too. laughs> and this room's uh 30 feet long and 20 feet wide so it's a bit bigger than the average in this place but still not that large are these two that are really close together on the eastern wall are they separate doors or are they just yes. a double door? okay so my money's on that being the kitchen. So you've got a server in and a server out door. Ooh. Jesus Christ. That is possibly just you noting your personal experience. <laughs> I thought that was a <laughs> men and women's room. It could be, but I think that might be what these back doors are. And I was offended by the fact they didn't have a uh, mixed gender bathroom. General so. neutral, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's listen to either one of them. If they well, make the same sound. Hold on, let's do some searching. You're going to search the walls. I'm going to search the uh, the table and under the table. So Tulok okay. steps forth and just mentions, okay, let's start searching this room. Perhaps there's something in here for us, and then we'll decide which direction to head. With Physic already just, like, knocking on every brick he can find on the walls. I love that that's your way to check for secret doors. <laughs> Tap, 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 He's like tap, looking tap, for tap, studs tap. behind plaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, wait till you reach the room of 1,000 bricks per wall. So uh, you're searching around, searching around. Don't spot much of anything. As you step over one of the uh, corpses, one of the skeletons, Physic, you notice uh, one of them is wearing a pair of bracelets. Oh, shit. 
Uh, Great. And, uh, Tulak, you're going around the table. You just see a lot of, uh, you know, some of the chairs are tipped over or pulled out. And again, it's just covered in, in all the uh, finery and plateware that's all sort of degraded at this point to no value. And, you know, was set up for, for dinner for sure. Clearly, there was stuff on the plates at one point, but it's all all uh, faded away. And as you're stepping over one, you notice there's a, a single arrow sticking out of one of their, uh, like, of, of the rib cage. And Gilda maybe keeping an eye on the room as well. Um, spots a couple of glints of gold kicking around uh, amongst uh, some of the uh, corpses. She'll point it out to um, Physic because it looks like he's closest, but she's definitely just going to be acting sentry, taking that defend action just in case. Cool. You know, like you, you, know, you never know when something's going to sneak up on you. Yeah. Tulak will investigate the arrow. Okay. Um, you quickly determine that it is, in fact, magical. It's in very good shape still. Why don't you roll me a check on there? 25. That'll do it. This is a viper arrow. The shaft of the arrow is covered in fine green scales, and its iron head comes to a pair of points, almost like fangs. After an activated viper arrow hits a target, the arrow transforms into a viper, and the target is affected by the viper's poison as if it had been bitten. The viper then lands in an open space adjacent to the target. The viper has summoned a trait and acts at the end of your turn, even though you didn't use the sustain a spell action. It basically supplies one casting of summon animal for a viper. It supplies a snake. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Uh, and it lasts for one minute or until slain. Uh, does it function as a bolt or only an arrow? Uh, this one is an arrow. It's a real prick move for you not to convert that, though, GM. <laughs> like, you've heard of the last ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like Physic could probably convert it. He's got a high enough crafting check. Yeah, I mean, well, good thought. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably not either. really, <laughs> but uh, it's a cool idea, so or we can explore it. it. Just yeah. chop the fletching off, and it's good to go. Uh, so Tulak will take the item, and he walks over to Physic and says, Physic, I... I think this might be something you want to take a look at. It's a magic item, and I know how you like to play with strange items. It's a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and physic we, will take it. I'm gonna redo that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sure, that's a good episode title. <laughs> physic, here, take a look at this arrow. It might be something you're interested in. Perhaps you can craft it or something. An arrow is no use to us. And he hands it over. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do in your consumables. So do you need a crafting check to change it over to a bolt? I mean... Uh, it's probably a downtime activity. Yeah, and perhaps, James, maybe you would be the one of the group that knows the, any distinct differences between a bolt and an arrow? I don't. Uh, I mean, the size. Is like, smaller, uh, yeah. Yeah, it would have to be heavier, right? Yeah, they're way like, more hardy. Okay. Yeah, okay. there's no arrowhead. There's no head, and the fletchings are almost non-existent. What I think you might be looking at, since this is a magical item, you might be looking at finding someone to transfer its properties to a bolt rather than rather than um, reconstructing this this item or yeah. like padding it some way. But what I'm saying is I have a pretty big bonus to my crafting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying to me, to my face, but <laughs> okay. I'm going to say not. Nah. You got uh, me. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it's gonna it's gonna be akin to transferring a rune or like applying magic to a, a parchment for a scroll or some such. Okay, so I'll turn what, what's it. the activation for it? It's a single uh, single action command activation. Uh, is, uh, then what's the trigger? To act after it's activated, uh, and then fired. So you have to activate it and then fire it, and when it hits, as while it's activated, it will transform. Could physic not just stab somebody with it or throw it? Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't see why not. Actually, rules for close combat with an arrow. Yeah, I mean, Legolas uh -oh. did it in that movie. I mean, that movie. <laughs> in that movie, I don't know which one it was. <laughs> just say uh, Lord of the Rings. You 
anti yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I was I meant I well, I figured people you were Lord of the Rings by Legolas, <laughs> but I don't remember which Lord of the Rings it was. I think it was the Helm's Deep one. Um, two I, towers. To be honest, I, w- I would be willing to bet it happens in all three. <laughs> oh yeah, fair yeah, enough. I mean, I played the video games of all three and stabbed yeah. people with arrows using Legolas. So. I'm I'm quite sure it happens in the first book or the first film when uh, when um, Boromir goes down. Anyway, <laughs> we digress. <laughs> the uh, yeah, I mean, I think if if you were to stab someone with an arrow, like melee wise, I would probably allow it, but it would probably just be like if you hit, you're only going to do one damage, kind of like a yeah. like a dart does. So there are rules for it. Oh, there, yeah, yeah, it's a feat from the APG called stabbing shot. Okay, the prerequisite is a rapid shot. Oh, oh okay. so you got to be a ranger, right? <laughs> Probably, Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. Oh, and elf is the other prerequisite. So they're really leaning into uh, it. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they watched the Peter Jackson <laughs> Lord of the Rings really. <laughs> they saw that movie. <laughs> We've seen this. Yeah. <laughs> they saw that movie. Uh, all right. In any case, uh, we got the bracelets here as well. And there's uh, you guys can divide this while you're like, there's 48 gold pieces around. Okay, uh, bracelets, what, is there anything to discern from them? Or are they just valuable bracelets? Um, is they magic? They uh, are a they jangly are silver bracelet. A set of bracelets, I should say. There's two of them. And um, uh, they are magical. What do they look like? Can you describe them? They're jangly and silver. The there's two fitting. of them? There's, and there's two linked? of them. Uh, they are not. Okay. I think these might be like manacles, uh, bracelet manacles or whatever they're called. But that would be super cool if they were like, because they mm. like tether you to somebody else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have those in uh, jail yeah. and prison. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll <laughs> uh, a religion on that if you uh, if you so allow it. Yep. Um, I will roll to his aid. 24 to aid. Nice. Uh, that's an aid. I rolled privately, so. I... Uh, yeah, you don't know. They do appear to be a pair, um, as I've already sort of made it obvious. Um, but you aren't quite sure what their effects are. I rolled a 19 occult on these fucking bracelets, okay? Yeah, just barely, given you're doing a second round here. Um, these are bracelets of dashing. Oh, dope. These are awesome. Uh, they basically make you lighter on your feet. You get a plus one item bonus to acrobatics checks. And once per day, you can use uh, a command activation and gain a 10 foot status bonus to your speed for one minute. I wouldn't mind those. Uh, yeah. Take them. Yeah. You don't want them? Nobody else wants them? Nah, those are all you. Honestly, I would (laughs) I'd prefer you to be more mobile and keep us safe. Like... Yeah, the, the the person that is rushing headlong into rooms should probably be the most mobile. There are Fair certain enough. items I will roll off on, but ones that indirectly keep me safe, you can go go on with your bad self. <laughs> I'll right. take it. And it takes um ten minutes to invest? No, as soon as you as soon as you put it on. As soon as you're able to wear it, it's invested. This ain't no five E motherfucker. Shield. <laughs> slides off the gauntlet, slides these two bracelets on, slides her gauntlet back on. Love Thanks it. very much, Tulok. I think these uh, these might come in, in quite handy. It'd be nice to have a little bit extra in in that leg every now and again. Yes, hopefully you don't put too much stress on it. Uh, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Fucking plus nine acrobatics. I'm going to be all right. Yeah, Tulok's got a plus 11 right now, which is pretty solid. Physic? Much less. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Plus three. Not trained. That's your problem. All right. Nothing else of value stands out in this room. Where do you want to go next? I kind of want to just hit this door up here and start making our way around the room clockwise. Unless you guys have somewhere you want to go. That like, seems We have no fine. idea what's to the west. No, I'm cool yeah. with that. I don't... If, there's, if there's nothing, you know, hidden and fun built into, let's go. That we found. We need to. We need to go trade in our old rogue for a new one. Um. Everyone, roll me a perception check. Sorry. Just as uh, James just mentioned that we have to trade our old rogue in for a new one. Uh, I was planning on <laughs> as we approach the that. door 
Tulak was touching the bag of holding on his hip and just kind of reminiscing or, you know, it hasn't been, it's been long for us, but it hasn't been long for them that he unceremoniously basically put Shad in the bag of holding as they were pressing yeah. forward. And oh, we haven't fuck. taken a second to stop yet. So he just yeah, kind you guys of... have not take, yeah, taken that moment to register Shad's gruesome death and then sho- being shoved into a bag. <laughs> yeah. So I forget about that. Tulak just kind of puts his hand on it with a grimace and just moves forward. Oh my God. Just get like, a corpse in the bag. Every time you try to pull something out, you're just like, you're reaching around the dead body of Shad. Oh my God. I love that he's like tapping it. Like there's like, he's got a, a prize possession in his fanny pack kind of thing. Just like. <laughs> well, it is a prize possession. I mean, true enough. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a life Freeman. So- so anyways, <laughs> as they're about to stack up on not the door anymore, it's not. where Shad, yeah, it's true, where Shad would have been checking for traps, that's what's on his mind. I got a 22 on that perception that Freeman called for earlier. 19. 27. Oh boy. Jeez. Uh, yeah, you you guys, you know, following uh, Gilda's lead, head over to the first northeastern door, and you each all spot in the corner of your eye the door you came in slowly just close itself dunk are we about to get gassed in here (laughs) so this is like 1989 Batman and the Joker just threw in all the gas bombs and then they're rolling in with the face mask so everyone else gets knocked out I legitimately don't remember that movie at all. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I remember Worth a rewatch, bro. It's, it's yeah. Tim Burton? Amazing. I just remember DeVito as yeah. the Penguin. It just being, yeah, so creepy. Jack Nicholson, dude. DeVito was in the second one, Batman Returns, with Michelle oh. Pfeiffer and Christopher Walken. Danny, Danny Elfman suddenly writing the score to the next five movies that he worked on because that's the (laughs) spider-man theme song too a little bit oh yeah (laughs) anyways two locks worried by that so let's try to get into a different room should we investigate that at all wasn't my dog though well like wasn't it no i don't know what that was two lock will move towards it and we'll check for traps as he looks at it Sure. Can you maybe bust off a detect magic while you're at it, just in case it was like a mage hand or an unseen servant? All right, detect magic. 30 feet. Yeah, uh, you. the best you detect is like what feels to be residual. A little residge? A real, real, little, little residge madge. But um, <laughs> what are we, GCP? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the um, uh, otherwise nothing. Yeah, you don't know traps. Um, okay. 22 on that. Just, no. Uh, then he will try the door. Just, and just so you know, thievery is not what you use to check the traps. Oh, what? Is it Perception? Yeah. You heard? I already, I already rolled it. You're good. All right. Okay. Uh, then I attempt the door. Uh, and you crack the door and it's totally as it was before. Uh, he looks over his shoulder at Lady Gilda and says, hmm, funny, but seems fine. Let's move forward. All right. Uh, does she hear anything at the door? Nothing. Okay. Taking the defend action, as as always, she open. She open. She cracks the door to a small room that, with a tall wine rack uh, that sits on the northern wall, and there are bottles across all of it, thick with dust after years of abandonment. She steps in real quick just to check the corners and make sure there isn't like a trigger plate first thing on the ground. And then as soon as you step in, you just see a flash of the room as it once was. The whole room seems to change around you really Ooh. quickly and it's pristine and clean. And you get this this feeling of, of, of uh, coolness in the room uh, and then it just flashes back to the way it is in front of you. The spirit of a kind sommelier. <laughs> Yeah, so she'll just back out. Uh, it's it's a wine cellar. I, I wouldn't know really the first thing about wine. Um, maybe there's something of value in there to one of the two of you. 
I mean, I guess I could roll a society check on it. Tulok steps in and would like to roll with spirit lore. Am I right? <laughs> spirit lore, yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, since you're perfect. empty on hero points, you get one. <laughs> that is really good. However, not applicable. <laughs> Fuck, that's good. Oh, man. Uh, um, Physic yeah. would like to walk in, uh, <laughs> waving his hands like a fucking dickhead. Just like, oh, fruity. Yet wafting, pe- wafting, yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> wafting. <laughs> it's audio it. medium, Duncan. Audio medium. <laughs> it's fruity, yet piquant. <laughs> Uh, uh, is there any you check just get a I can whole do bunch on of dust up your nose? <laughs> yeah. Is there any is, is there any check I can do on any of the bottles? To... Yeah. If you're looking at the bottles, I uh, will take a society check. Uh, that thing that I love so much. I've got mine's plus nine. I can roll this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he will defer to to it, like after getting a big bunch of dust up his nose. Physical <laughs> sneeze. Twenty six. I'll roll to eight as well with my cooperative nature, which is a natural twenty for a twenty eight. Oh shit! Oh, okay. I think that turns Plus yours two. into a twenty eight there too, Lux. Yeah, buddy. Uh, all right. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna do something really uh, unusual. But um, you uh, you basically uh, start sorting through. You see some of the a lot of the wines have gone dry. Uh, the corks like fallen out and shriveled, whatever. But there are. There are a, a few wines that are still secured and just pouring over the labels a bit. You you recall some of the the names and the uh, vintages and uh, realize that they could be of some reasonable value. And um, you uh, you actually rolled a critical success with that aid. Um, so I'm just gonna give you an extra one. So there are four, four bottles. Four bottles labeled wine of reasonable value. Nice. <laughs> um, a little on and, the nose, uh, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're worth 20 gold apiece. I just, I like this scene, like Tulak's pulling out these bottles, and he's like, oh, this this looks like a good vintage, and Guild is like, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 from Kadira. You can tell by the heraldry on the on the label. <laughs> yeah, just like yeah. backseat Somala somming him. Man, you know what? Her- heraldry lore in some way might have applied if we'd you know, maybe one or two of them almost, you know? It's it's the same as my society, so it, it's... Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, but, but lowers the DC, right, is the idea. Oh, it does okay. it. When you use lore, it's a lower DC, yeah. Uh, so um, Tulak takes them and we'll slide them into the bag of holding. This one's for you, Shad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just dunk on his head. <laughs> Oh, poor Shad. All right, and that's your that's your wine room, your wine cellar. Okay, we move to the northernmost door on the western wall. Eastern wall. Nope. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all forget our we all we all forget our Man, I, points. Sometimes it's a miracle it's I correct fun. you on that because I always get east and west mixed up. <laughs> yeah, we need to put weast. a compass on the map. It's weast. Yeah, it's always weast. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you listen, you hear nothing, you crack door you in, while defending? Yeah, um, unless Tulak wants to, I mean, I guess he already popped the detect magic, so yeah. Yeah, so I'm crack. just avoiding notice. And this is a smaller version of uh, some of the larger rooms you've found, but it is extremely familiar. Uh, the room is etched with silvery lines and runes twisting all around the walls. The uh, floor and ceiling are almost completely covered with large polished metal discs. It is another teleportation chamber. Would we recognize it as such, just based on oh, yes. the arcane yeah. symbols? It looks like, yeah, it's just like another smaller version of, of the same rooms you've you've come across already. Tulok steps in and is kind of running his hands along the walls. And he turns back out to the other two and says, This is something that I need to learn. Perhaps we could travel more easily between the floors and maybe even back to Otari if we really learned how to harness this magic. But as of now, I know nothing of it. Have I never heard of fucking walking? Well, I mean, yes, but (laughs) once you harness the magic, 
my friend Physic, it's more convenient. When did Physic get so snipey? <laughs> he's not scared anymore. <laughs> he's uh, he's tired and cranky. <laughs> Just like you. Um, and as as Physic sort of <laughs> says that in a bit of a huff, probably turns his back and realizes that the the, the main entrance door closes again. Ominous. Okay. I mean, is it just like, so you walk into the room and you don't have to look up the shitty stairwell? Like, it could just be some magic that's just like, oh, let's make the room nicer by having a ghost butler close the door for you. <laughs> I mean, as you magic, linger... would have picked it up on the detect magic. He said there was Ooh, lingering okay. magic. Residual uh, magic, yeah. I th- well, okay, and that's not from the teleportation circle, I guess? As no, it's not, and I mean, there's definitely residual magic in here as well. But there was, there was elsewhere around him, right? Um, and as you sort of like, you know, run your fingers along the runes in, in this room, sure enough, the wine cellar door closes on its own. It's being closed as a reaction to having people run their fingers over the wine cellar door. No, it just, just at some point, just slowly uh, mm. closes. No, okay. no particular trigger that you that you noticed. Yeah, we've all seen the haunting staring. Yeah. Liam Neeson. Yeah. <laughs> Tulak steps out of that Great. room. Sorry, I have another question about it. Is this one still active? Like we we know we found one that's not Oh active. yeah, no. No, you found you found three before this one. This is the fourth one you found. The first one is uh was on the surface but stripped of all the silver, so it's no longer able to be functional at all. The okay. other ones were intact but not uh functioning. And this is the okay. same as those. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's probably a single ritual that connected all of them together and the rituals are over or gone or, or whatever. Effectively, yeah. Okay. I'm reading a lot about rituals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next door, same, same. Yep. Same, same. Uh, you hear nothing. Open door. And this is a small room with a metal wash tub. Uh, lying across uh, inside is a small skeleton that at a distance appears childlike, which maybe sinks your stomach for a moment, but when you look in, you are trained in medicine, Lady Gilda, you realize that it is a, it is an adult skeleton of a halfling. It's way better. Um, Can I still see the feet on its bones? Or the, the, the hair on its feet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if anything, that's the, that's the thing that's the most fresh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as soon as you step into the room to take a closer look, same thing. The room flashes into uh, the the tub, like it's now filled with bubbly water, and uh, and there's a sharp smell of soap that fills the air, and everything is clean and pristine, and then snaps back. Okay. What a fucking Stanley Kubrick's The Shining kind of thing going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> <This is> horrifying. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, she'll just step back out and physic. You're you're the surgeon. Maybe you can determine the cause of death, but there is. Decidedly, uh, a skeleton in the wash tub. Maybe, maybe if us, 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 uh, m- maybe he drowned. <laughs> right. I mean, Physic will walk in and look and say, "Oh, he looks pretty tall." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he died of aqua asphyxiation. Oh, that, was a, that was a big fella. <laughs> is that is that something that Physic could ascertain? Yeah, uh, roll through me, roll me, uh, Can I do a yeah. Can I do a crafting? I think in this case, it's very specifically medicine. Okay, that's fair. I'm trying to determine a cause of death. Two on the die for a 13. <laughs> nice. Uh, hey. uh, oddly, enough, oddly enough, I'm going to give it to you because uh, it's quite obvious that there's a, a a really sharp nick in one of the ribs and they were clearly stabbed. This was, this was a murder for the other guy. Seem to be surrounded um, by that right now. Something, something wild happened here when there seemed to be a dinner party that's gone much awry. And Tulak will search that room while Physic is investigating the body. Uh, and uh, as you are going through these motions, the door to the teleportation circle closes. I have a feeling I know what this is. I have a feeling I want you to metagame a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Gilda would have no idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you're sorry, you're searching that room you said there, Tulak? Yeah. 
Okay, and uh, you see nothing of value. No secret doors? Nada. All right, he walks out and carries on further south to the final door in the eastern wall. Okay. Stands just south of it, allowing Gilda room for access. Do her thing. Mm -hmm. And she does that. Okay. Gives a listen. Here's nothing. And cracks door. This room has an open metal hatch that lies on the floor straight ahead on the, next to the room's eastern wall. Storage bins sit on the north and south sides that are heaped with old bones, broken tools, and lumps of stone. And there are bones scattered all across the floor. What the hell was this room used for? My thought was a garbage chute, but I don't know why the bones are here. Is there any smell? Like any residual smell in the air? It's very stale. Okay. She'll, um... She'll cautiously step in. You step in and flash. The room is as it once was, still heaped in uh, refuse and whatnot. Um, the bones off the floor vanish, and there's a mop sitting in the corner, and uh, there's a sharp smell of decay that stings your nostrils, um, especially of, like, uh, wasted food, and then flashback. So it is, it is a garbage disposal. Uh, okay, she will take another cautious step up to the hatch. Okay. And with her uh, nothing, she'll light a torch and I guess just drop it in. Okay, is anyone else following Gilda into the room? Tulok will follow Gilda in and just hold a hand on her backpack as he sees her look over the edge. Okay. And where are you, Physic? Uh, Physic is going to be five feet northwest of Tula, so just outside the door, around the corner. And what are you? What are you doing? You just you just hanging out there? I hate this line of questioning because it feels like <laughs> something bad's going to happen. <laughs> so you know what you're doing, man. That's all. I'm dropping a torch into what could be a methane hole. Something bad is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair uh, he will be uh, holding an uh, elixir of healing okay lesser and like you're just holding that and probably crossbow the other hand yeah just just, just... vibing waiting for okay. shit to happen just vibing. Uh, okay uh, Gilda you hold up the torch uh, over the hatch get ready to drop it in and then you sort of see something in the periphery of your vision from all, kind of above your head. And you slowly look up and there's this skeletal face sort of forming in the air right in front of you. And this creature just forms out of nowhere over the hatch. Whoa. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's mighty horrifying. Yeah, a, 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 a nearly fully skeletal apparition, and I need everyone who can see it to roll me a will save. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that pause was awful. <laughs> well, it's going to be cut, obviously. <laughs> I'm glad she's oh, got, like, God. some flatware to, you know, eat whatever fucking things skeletons do. That's yeah, for good. the listeners, it's like a weird skeletal ghost with books and forks and weird stuff flying around it, and then its claws, its hands are just like two fingered claws. <laughs> two so from, clawed uh, fingers. From our conversation, <laughs> two... am, am I am, is Physic witnessing this right now? Well, that's why I was asking what you were doing. And it, se it seems to me you weren't looking in the room, so I'm going to say no. Oh. Uh, Tulak and Lady Gilda. Uh, Tulak, you rolled a what, sorry? 20 fucking 8. Baby. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, and Lady Gilda. Gilda was caught a little bit by surprise and uh, only got a 19. So she was oh, okay. not expecting this directly yeah. in front of her. Not a terrible roll, but yeah, you're, you're, you are caught off guard. Uh, caught off guard. Uh, um, you immediately become frightened too. 
incorrect. Whoa. I immediately oh. become frightened one because of my aura of courage. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. such a badass. <laughs> Does that aura extend? It, sir, it, uh, whenever I reduce the frightened value at the end of my turn, it reduces the frightened value for all allies within 15 feet. Oh, oh, that yeah. is so sick. Okay. <laughs> so you're frightened one. We're going to roll for initiative, as you might have suspected, and see what the F is up. Do you need to use an action for that? Or is that an innate ability? This is a passive aura. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll really cool. There for you. Um, all right. Let's get some initiative. Uh, Lady Gilda, who do you get? 20. Not too bad. Two lock? 25. Okay. Physic? 19. Okay. Let's begin. Two lock. Top of the order. All right. Tulak. Looking towards this creature, his arms start to extend in black swirling magic as he casts tentacular limbs. <laughs> I was like, is he, is he going to fuck up the one syllable word now? <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, that, that's the one you struggle on. Tentacular <laughs> limbs. Fuck. <All> right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Just like these oh, guys, well, the Cthulhu-esque <laughs> fucking sheep. You know what, guys? Uh, okay. We're having fun. Okay. <laughs> so, I am going to roll against an undead creature. Uh, doing what? So, what you, you need a fortitude saving throw. Oh, okay. Uh, so, you tentacle your limbs, one, one action. Chill and then touch. Now you're doing something else. Two, oh, chill touch. Okay. Um, fortitude? You got it. Natural 20, 29. Ooh, okay. Well, in that case, nothing. You're fine. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you probably also a little bit a little bit shaken from this sudden appearance. It hasn't respond it hasn't uh, affected your response time, but maybe your your uh, efficacy of your magic. Lady Gilda, you're up. Lady Guild is a little bit out of her depth here and uh, a little bit more surprised than I would like her to be by this creature. So I think she's going to try and assess the situation and do a recall knowledge. Uh, okay. Uh, that's going to be a religion, please. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Or occultism, actually. Nope. Uh, uh, and that's a nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, sorry. That, uh, nope on occult. Uh, recall knowledge oh, okay. are private, so I rolled it private. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you don't know. Okay. Obviously, an apparition of some kind, incorporeal, it appears. Yep. But uh, otherwise, you don't know. Okay, she will uh, do what she does, and with her second action, she will strike out with those hand wraps and mighty blows, hoping that uh, she can at least land some of that positive damage because physical damage is going to be um, hmm. less likely. Yes. So that is a 29 to hit. That oh, is. fuck. That is 15 points of bludgeoning. Okay. 15 and bludge. four points of positive. What did that feel like? It felt like the positive did its did its part, but the physical not so much. Okay. As as you would suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Like, did, did it feel like your hand just passed through it, or did it feel like it, if she made contact, like, at all? Like, did it catch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you made, uh, you made contact. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh, if I'm remembering my rules correctly in this, uh, because you are wielding a magical weapon. Okay. Uh, your your fists are magical. Um, that was an important part of it. Yes. So when you normally wouldn't think it would make contact, you did. Okay. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with this creature, but it's it's not taking the full force of my punch. I can feel myself wisping right through it there. A, a retreat may be wise there, too, luck. Uh, and with her third action, she is going to reach out with that same hand and lay it on uh, this this ghosty ghost. So I require a, I think it's a basic fortitude save. Yes, okay. Uh, 18. 18 is a fail. Oh, okay. Uh, so you are going to take 18. Oh, no, 1d6. Is it heightened? Should be auto heightened. I don't know. Yeah, heightened plus one, so um, uh, half your level, so it should be 
uh, up to level two, so it should be uh, 2d6. So that will be six points of positive, and you will take a minus two status penalty to your AC for one round. And Gilda is no uh, longer oh, okay. frightened due to her aura of courage. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, um, may- maybe not, actually. Um, oh, no. At the end of your turn, it, it reduces by a value. Okay. Always. So, yeah, that, that's what I thought. I just, it's been a while. Okay. So. Cool. You strike, you lay on hands, and uh, the fear is shaken off, which is quite appropriate. Uh, and next up is this creature, which then, before your eyes, vanishes. That's what you want. Well, that's not good. The bones around the feet of both you and Tulak begin to stir. And they lift up and start shooting all across the room at both of you. It is going to be against Lady Gilda, a natural 20. And against Tulak, a 31. What's the total on the natural 20? Whoa. 33. Okay. Uh, is that a crit on you, Tulak, or no? It is not. Oh. oh, so close. So close. Lady Gilda, you're going to take 28 bludgeoning. Jesus Christ. Okay. And Tulak, you take a mere nine piercing. It is now physics turn. Okay, so Physic is going to step south five feet and use Killing Bomb. Jesus okay, Christ. Okay, sweet. This is bad. Yeah, he's going to use Healing Bomb to throw a uh, uh, Lazarillo Lazar- 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 Okay. at Lady Gilda through Lesser Cover. Uh, cool. I mean, I think, I th- if I remember correctly, you, do you succeed even on a fail with this? Yeah, he succeeds even on a fail. I just edited it yesterday. Three on the die for a 13. Okay. <laughs> uh, almost. Uh, still success. Uh, roll that healing. So that is 3d6 plus 6 for 17. Thank you so much. I love this scene. Uh, like Gilda's swinging at air. It evaporates. She just gets stabbed with a bunch of bones, turns around and gets hit in the face with like this silvery liquid that just heals her back up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Top of a uh, round two. Tulak, what do you got? <laughs> All right. Tulak is going to start his turn by rolling a spirit lore. Okay. He's going to be a 26. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and this is actually, uh, I think this is quite specific. Uh, so that I am going to rule as a critical success. Hey, nice man. Tell me everything, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a this is a poltergeist, and. Uh, Basically, when a creature dies and for whatever reason, its spirit is unable or unwilling to leave the site of its death, that spirit may manifest as a poltergeist, a restless, invisible spirit that is still able to manipulate physical objects. Many poltergeists perish in a way that resulted from or has led to extreme emotional trauma. Uh, Just like some of the other ghosts, this is a sight-bound apparition and has the rejuvenation trait. So in order for you to overcome uh, or in order for you to get, dispatch it, you need to sort of o- overcome its its requirements. So this is less like the others where they're more of a social puzzle, and this one is like, you gotta kick its ass and then see what you can do to put it to rest. Essentially, it is naturally invisible. So it only appears to frighten. And otherwise, it, it goes straight back to invisible at the start of its turn, no matter what, for free. Um, it can use uh, that, that ability it just uses called Telekinetic Storm. Um, and it can use that as a single target or a multiple target um, situation. Um, it's also got a telekinetic reaction um, of defense. And uh, from there, it's what you would expect. Basically, resists all five except force, ghost touch, and positive double resistance versus non-magical. Force, ghost touch, positive. We have those in our arsenal. So I got that wand, physics got them bombs, and I got them wraps. Yeah, well, 
eat your heart out, Gary Sherman, <laughs> one of the three directors of the movie Poker Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even know that? <laughs> you are you're just on fire today with obscure references that I, right? I cannot handle because I haven't seen any movie you've referenced today. At that's all. usually that's usually James's shtick. Yeah, <laughs> the obscure references of things no one's seen. <laughs> <laughs> Really impressed. Uh, um, what else you got there, Tulak? Now that you've had time to look at your shit. <laughs> God, I was really hoping that that uh, bag of uh, the cantrip bag would have like a fairy fire type thing. Oh, yeah. No, that's a, definitely like a first or second level spell. I don't have any shit like that. Yeah. Tulak is going to stride out of the room to behind Physic and is going to cast Guidance on Lady Gilda. Second and third turns. Appreciate that, sir. All right. Lady Gilda. It's invisible. Yeah, you first action at. is going to be to seek. Seek. All right. Okay. This is... Yeah, it is a secret perception check versus the stealth DC. Okay. You uh, have no idea where it went, if it went anywhere. Okay. Uh, she will also stride out of the room because she's got, there's nothing else she can really do. Stride out of the room and on your way out, this bone whips up from behind you. It strikes at you as you, as you enter this space in particular, one right next to the door. And... That is going to be a 16 to hit. That is a miss. Just bounces off her backpack. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> All right. You're out of the room. Yeah. Anything else? I'm sure there's something, but uh, I'm just going to pass. Uh, you know what? She'll raise her shield. Raise her shield. Cool. Yeah. Never never a wasted action. Yeah, this would no. not. Physic now straight in front of the door. This poltergeist appears again right in front of his eyes. And I need uh, Tulak and uh, Physic to roll me another will save. Oh, fuck. fuck you. Because it uses its ability called Frighten. Physic's got a 20. Uh, that is a failure. So fuck. you are going to be frightened too? Oh, God. Could I uh, use a hero point to re roll that? Uh, if you like, sure. Uh, I don't like, <laughs> but I would gladly do. Oh my fucking god! There's four on the die for it. Well, oh uh, yeah, nope, nope. I was really hoping that twenty-eight for me first round was a crit success, but now that I know that it's not, it's not. Yeah, coming in hot with a ooh, that's a thirteen. But I think I'm also going to use my hero point. <laughs> Your newly gained hero point. Yeah, okay. you know, keep this keep this economy going, right? Gotta use them. Yep. Twenty six. Okay, you good. At least you didn't have a critical failure there, uh, physic. Um, and this creature is now going to. Uh, what can it do? What can it do? Uh, it's going to use this telekinetic storm directly. Actually, I think it's gonna it's gonna strike at. Uh, at both Physic and, and Tulak again. Um, I think multiple people. Let's see here. Uh, I will use my uh, Retributive Strike if you will allow it. Yeah, don't see why not. Uh, you won't be able to strike from your angle, though. That's fine. I just want to give Physic some protection against this damage. Okay. Uh, so that cool. will be a plus seven, uh, or sorry, a minus seven to this damage for you, Tulak. Tulak or Physic? Sorry, Physic. Okay. Sorry, too long. Uh, so, Physic, uh, 20, 27 to hit you. Yeah, that's a hit, not a crit. Or, sorry, 25 to hit you. 25 to hit you. And then, less, than, uh, less than a crit. 26 for two lock. That's a hit. Uh, all right. And, uh, Physic, you're going to take 14 piercing. Minus seven would be seven total. Yep. And then uh, bones shooting out of this room uh, and some rocks out of the bins. Uh, it's going to be eight slashing to two lock. It's getting lower into the stick here for those... Uh, those damages. Yeah, those are substantially lower than the 28 that I got. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that was a big crit. It's a 2d12 crit. Wow. Uh, Physic, you're up. This thing is visible. Physic 
will throw a lesser ghost charge. Okay. Good call. Charge that ghost. For a 7 on the die, for a 15 to hit, and I'm so sad. Uh, yeah, 15 doesn't hit, but you still get your splash, right? Yeah, one splash. One splash, okay. So one positive splash damage. So it ain't much, but it's something. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, next move, step south. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I will draw another elixir of life. Uh, okay. Top around three, two lock, straight in front of you again. You got your dangly limbs. <laughs> Yes, sir. I've got my dangly limbs, but I will not be using it because Tulak will be casting the classic magic missile three round action. Let's get some hits down here. Hell yeah. Probably a good call. Uh, yeah. Six yeah. on the first roll. Max damage. Oh, a nice. four and a nice. three for 13 total okay. points of damage. All right. Not too bad. That's some damage. That's some damage. Lady Gilda. Lady Gilda's first action will be to step, so she is now back in front of this uh, uh, poltergeist, blocking its view from, theoretically, Tulak and Physic. Second action, she's going to throw a fist at this thing. That is a 21 to hit. Uh, how long is your reduction to AC last? Uh, full round. So it should be over. It should be over, man. Okay. Uh, in that case, that's a miss. And just to cut in here, uh, once Lady Gilda moves into that position, Physic is going to goblin scuttle west of five feet. Oh, yep. nice. Okay. Nice. The action. Love the goblin scuttle. Uh, sorry, can we... I, I need you to mechanically clarify something for me, and mm -hmm. I know Gilda would have an idea about this at this point. Is it when the ghost appears that they have to roll a saving throw? Yes. Okay. So if it okay, so her last action will be to raise her shield. Then, no, you know what? She'll strike again. Uh, also, I just want to quickly say, uh, uh, physics frightened condition re is reduced by one after his turn. I forgot we missed that, but he's still frightened. One. Okay, that's a that's a thirteen to hit. Uh, thirteen is a miss. Okay, so that will end Gilda's turn, and her frightened condition would normally tick down. Now that means all allies within fifteen feet's frightened condition ticks down due to her aura of courage. Physic is no longer frightened. Fuck, oh, nice. yes. <laughs> uh. Everyone bring a champion to the party. Uh, okay, that's your turn. Poltergeist disappears. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm going to put this out here. This is why I wanted to get mechanically clear on the um, uh, effect. Because there is a single round action called avert gaze that will give you a plus two to your saving throw. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is not a, uh, yeah, it's not one of those features. It's not like a Medusa Gaze feature. It is uh, an action. So essentially, uh, since we got a natural 20, we're, we're rolling through most of this. It's literally just going to happen again right now. It's naturally invisible, so the start of its next turn, it turns invisible if it's if it's revealed. And then it uses, while invisible, uses one action to reappear and do the frightened action. Okay, so it's not a gaze, it's, okay. It's not a gaze, yeah. And uh, so now I need everyone... Everyone to roll me another will save uh, as it does this, and it's gonna it's gonna rinse repeat here. It's it's pretty mindless, and it's it's really angry. <laughs> yeah, as a fifteen for the lady. Okay, twenty six for the goblin. Goblin is good. Lady would normally be two, but is only frightened one. Thirteen for the half elf, and frightened two for two lock. Oh, jeez, you really got to stop doing that. <laughs> it's like... Uh, no, it doesn't make that noise. <laughs> and, uh, the uh, boogie, 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 boogie. Uh, telekinetic storm again on all three of you. Beauty, this it doesn't have to take any multiple attack penalties. So it's just going to... All this shit just starts flying out of the room. First on the list is going to be Lady Gilda with a 30 to hit. That will hit. That's actually a critical with the Frightened Condition. Oh, snap. Uh, oh, boy. Bad. Next is a natural one against Tulak. Hell yeah. And then a 15 against Physic. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm also going to use my re... Whoa. Nope, never mind. Did you already use your reaction? No, but it's the trigger's on an ally. 
Uh, oh, but you still... Oh, you don't have your shield up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could 24. stamp my... Uh, you know what? Actually, I will st uh, I, I will use my reaction to stamp my shield into place. Reactive shield giving me my bonus to my AC. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a reaction to raise your shield, right? Yeah. Oh, so okay. So make my AC a 22. Okay. So that will technically negate the crit. Awesome. Uh, that's a, such a sick move. Uh, okay, in that case, uh, I already rolled, but I'll just have it since it's a times two, so you take 12. Okay. 12 bludgeoning. Thank you. Uh, cool. Uh, Physic, you're up. Uh, first action, draw it. Physician's tools. Healer's tools. I'm, I've made that mistake before. But battle medicine. <laughs> battle medicine on Gilda. Good call. Oh, me to be at a 15. Uh, <laughs> oh <God. laughs> That's a 2 on oh, the die. Oh, oh my man. God. How am I so bad at this? So that's, that's 2 <laughs> HP back? Uh, uh, no, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, 1D, 1D8? What is it? I always forget. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, it's been a while for me, too. It's been a while since we recorded. Um, 9 HP. Awesome. Every little bit helps. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Okay, anything else from your physic? It's one action? Two actions because I had to draw my healer's tools. And then for a third action. You know what? Just apply the minor elixir of life that I had in my hand to Lady Gilda. Okay. Thanks. You like step up, cut her open, bleed her a little bit, and then rub like a <laughs> like a topical ointment on it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's pretty much all you need. Uh, okay, roll that up. Same deal, just uh, click on it in your inventory and hit the big red button. Uh, another 2 HP. Take it. Uh, however, you do get the uh, the bonus to, was it, diseases or whatever? <laughs> Not that it matters. Uh, all right, round four, two lock. All right, uh, using his lengthened arms he reaches over Lady Gilda and will attempt a chill touch again so that's going to be another fortitude save from you sir uh okie dokie 27 natural 18 damn it okay <laughs> you're taking the least amount of damage but holy crap I'm, I'm defending against you you are unaffected and I will cast Guidance on Physic. Guidance on Physic, okay. And that is Tulok's turn. Uh, Lady Gilda. Yeah. Uh, I am in a place I'm not normally, and that's I don't know what to do because I am not particularly effective against ghosts. And I cannot remember if I've used my Desperate Prayer already for the day because I don't remember the last time we rested. But I think it was like back Ooh, in the yeah. early thirties, so I'm going to assume I've used it. Um, yeah. So I think I think she's just gonna have to power through. Yeah, I mean you can do damage to this thing. So Yeah, yeah. So first action she'll raise her shield just to get that up. Mm -hmm. Uh second action she will throw a fist. That is a thirty two to hit. Oh uh, that's a crit. Perfect. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's go. That is eighteen points of bludgeoning. And okay. six points of positive. Oh, uh, punching ghost. Okay. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> I so in in one of our Pathfinder one E uh like yeah, Seldom I campaigns, I made what I call a punch cleric. He was a uh, a hybrid <laughs> brawling cleric who was an exorcist. So he would just like punch ghosts out of people and like that was a real thing that he could do. Beat the devil out of him, as Bob yeah, Ross. We played say. one session of that campaign, and my character was was wholly designed to like fight with a shield and yeah. defend his character. <laughs> we all get we played one session. It was really bummer. <laughs> yeah, it was it was good though. It was a lot of fun. And then uh, she'll she'll call out as a free action, uh, gentlemen. If you've got the reach, maybe it might be worth taking some cover behind the table. That that might offer you a little bit of uh, protection from this this storm of. Of bones and stones, uh, and my, then... my my limbs—they aren't tentacular. <laughs> <laughs> but you throw and shoot a crossbow. Yeah, <laughs> we get it. You can say the word. Must be nice. 
Life's tough, Scott. <laughs> Punch with guidance? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> till the end of your next turn, until the end of your current turn. Yeah, so she'll she'll do a, a, a punch map minus four with, with, uh, with that guidance. So that is a 28 to hit. That hits. You can't not kill it. Okay. Or destroy it. Describe your destruction <laughs> of this undead spirit. Uh, same, same. So, like, she, she, she does her, you know, she gets a solid uppercut in, and then she leans back and gives it a check jab with the, with the last little bit of, of her action, and, uh, this thing just, uh, disapparates in front of her, and Oof, nice. as it does, her allies find their courage returned and bolstered as the frightened condition ticks down by one. Nice. Hell. And in true poltergeist fashion, the house implodes on itself. um boom this poltergeist is destroyed at least for now but two lock knows that it will rejuvenate in time so two lock looks to his companions and says much like the other ghosts we need to determine how to keep this one from returning let's take a look in the room and see if we can decipher anything and Try to put it to rest before it comes back to harry us further. Or we can just get the fuck out of here. Tulak, not interested in that, pushes past. It would be kind of nice to um, to know why it was here, and if we can help, we should help, right? Uh, I'm gonna, gonna stand out here for about ten minutes. <laughs> 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 and we just catch up the old uh, the old clock there, and uh, as as you would expect, the door to the uh, the bathroom or the sorry not the bathroom the but the place with like the big the big tub and the halfling that closes, and if you leave the door unmanned after a minute or so, the door here closes behind Tulak as well. Okay, well Tulak is in there, and I would like to, I mean. What are we talking here? He wants to investigate the room and see if he can decipher what happened here. I know there was that flashback. Does he get any more information or? Uh, no, not from that. Uh, but you're like searching around the room looking for anything you can find. And you find that several bones are that are in the same trash bin are easily determined to belong to the same human skeleton as if the body had been tossed in all at once without care everything else seems to be like broken up and scattered and like you know previously before being dumped in this room except for this one set of bones there's a crack in the skull that's the obvious cause of death as well and they're in the refuse bins not in the not not in the compost hole Correct. Yeah, it's in one. You know, one of the. I mean, on the map, it looks like they're big bins, but like, imagine it's more several bins, and there's one bin in particular where there's just this like nearly whole skeleton all by itself, the just tossed in without without any care or reverence at all. Uh, roll me. I, I think I'll take a occultism or religion again. Twenty. Given what you know about poltergeists, which is apparently everything. Um, you figure that this spirit, uh, this this person was killed, murdered, um, unjustly, and was disposed of in a most disrespectful manner. And this is what is causing the unrest. So putting it to rest would be something along the lines of like blessing the the room or properly cremating the remains or some such lady gilda i believe i have found what has happened here there was a murder and the body was not disposed of with any form of reverence is there any spell that you could use with the power of a rory to perhaps consecrate this room or make this spirit at ease Unfortunately, Tulak, I think the best I can do is offer it a prayer. The Aurori doesn't flow through me like it like it does a caster of the divine or or whatever flows through you or learned 
through an individual, Rory blesses me personally with his grace. And I don't really know how to turn that outward so much as it's, it's an inward thing. When I focus, when I meditate, that's how I'm able to, to create this positive energy and this healing. I, I could lie on hands if you think that would have some effect, but with the deceased, we tend to just leave them be. Perhaps you could say a prayer and I will cast gentle repose upon the bones. I know it has been a decease for who knows how long, but maybe the magic will help slightly. And Physic twirling his mustache sweet slightly goes, it's a sign of a moida. <laughs> Physic has a mustache? <laughs> what, why did this come about? He does now. <laughs> It's been growing whatever since he went down. Uh, yeah, the it's, it's wispy yeah. at best. Come on. <laughs> All right. You going along with this, Kilda? Yeah, she will. Um, I think she'll help Tulak uh, re like move the skeleton out of the bins um, and onto the floor, like somewhere a little bit more uh, reverent. Maybe just a, a single fist over the chest for a Rory. Uh, or an open hand, I guess, over the over where the heart would be for for Rory. I guess is probably a more more accurate. Sure. Uh, and after spending that ten minutes to catch her breath, she is refocused, so she will uh, lay a hand on the skeleton um, over its hand mm-hmm. and uh, cast lay on hands and give uh, speak out a little bit of her morning preparation. Uh, not not the full prayer. The full prayer is for her, but. Is that morning M O R N or M O U R N? Uh, M O R N. I don't think I don't think she mourns per se, because uh, she she's a conduit to something bigger and better. Like she knows that there's life after this or existence after this. So there's a there's a real sting of neutrality about her. Yeah. <laughs> Rory, find us in the the darkness here. I don't know if this was one of your servants. But I hope that you can see to bringing them onto the boneyard anyway. They need assistance passing through. Please give them strength when they are weak. Give them courage when they're afraid. And bless them with peace of mind when they're in turmoil. It is in your name we pray. And hopefully lay the spirit to rest. And then she'll cast lay on hands. And as Gilda finishes this, Tulak is holding the staff of necromancy and in the other hand he waves in the air above the body and a purple light comes from the staff to his hand and just over top of the body and he casts gentle repose i thought you would do something very different i don't know if you guys ever played the necromancer in diablo 2 but that's kind of what i was expecting (laughs) just (laughs) to explode out of this other skeleton (laughs) and it's the festrog yeah. <laughs> as you uh, <laughs> as you go through all these motions to 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 give this this unknown um person uh from hundreds of years ago, centuries ago, um a proper rest as it were, not, not quite burial, but at least something respectful, something reverent. Um you cast these spells and go through these motions and It lays still, of course, on the ground, but the bones that are scattered about start to move around and lift into the air and are slowly but surely replaced into the bins where they once were instead of scattered about the room and outside into the dining room. And you both feel as though you have done your bit to put this restless soul to rest. Tulak, I want to give you a hero point for pushing for the rest of this spirit and i'm also going to grant you a minor boon from phrasma nice. Ooh. you are blessed for returning this soul to the boneyard or at least on its journey towards it to bless and be once... stressed baby <laughs> <laughs> once you can gain a plus two status bonus to a single check you can apply this bonus after you determine the result and with this reverent moment we're gonna call it there ayo and the door mysteriously shuts behind Gilda and Tulak yeah (laughs) 
And when no one's looking, Shad goes down, uh, falls out of the bag and goes down the chute. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vaults and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at UnchartedNorth.ca, Patreon.com slash UnchartedNorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in.